war, but they will escalate, and then tensions will break out, and during war times, I can assure you, you don't want to own in war times derivatives at Citigroup and AIG and UBS. You want to own physical gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and of course you should have a farm in the countryside because the next war will target financial centers and big cities. But if you have a house in the middle of nowhere, nobody will drop a bomb on you. That should be clear. And during war times, each time there was a war, Napoleonic Wars, American Civil War, World War I, Vietnam War, commodities go ballistic. So my advice to you, at least with some of your money, you should be in physical commodities. Now, one of the problems I foresee is this. If you have an economy with no debts and then you increase the credit in the system, you can create first some economic growth, like was the case in the 50s and 60s and so forth. But there comes a point where additional credit and additional money printing doesn't go into the real economy. And let me explain you that in this expansion, 2001 to 2007, and now the last two years of recession, in this recession, all the employment gains in the United States of the expansion were given back today. There's less employment in the U.S. than in 1999, but the population has increased by 30 million. In other words, the expansion was kind of an illusion, and it bypassed the ordinary people. It made the Goldman Sachs partners very well to do, and thus financial people benefited from it. But basically, it's very, been a very disappointing expansion, and I think this will be the pattern going forward that the money creation and the fiscal deficits will not boost economic growth in the Western world, and that therefore they'll print more and more, and that this will be eventually inflationary. Now, there are several problems, but the one thing I just wanted to show there is one argument for equities, in other words, for the stock markets, and this is this. If interest rates are at 0% and you can buy stocks yielding, say, 3% dividend yield, then in the long run, you'll probably be better off in stocks. Secondly, it's unusual that in the United States, the 10 years total return turns negative. In other words, stocks over the last 10 years have lost money, including dividends. And when that happened in the past, usually the subsequent 10 years were much better. I'm not saying that stocks will go up inflation adjusted, but I think that you will be better off in equities than in cash and in bonds for the next 10 years. Also, I'd like to point out that what can happen in a system is the Mexican and Latin American model after the petrodollar crisis in 1980. Let me explain. This is an index of Mexican stocks from 1979 to 1988. You can see that the low in uh, 1979 was a thousand for the index. This is the local index in local currency. So we went from a thousand to 343 thousand because they printed money had large fiscal deficit. So we're up 343 times, and then we had the 87 crash and everything crashed, but at the end, at the low in 88, we were still at 139,000. So in local currency, we went up 139 times in stock markets. Now in dollar terms, what happened is, because the peso collapsed here by 99%, in, so in dollar terms, we only went up here from 48 to, 50, to 62. But I, I want to stress that even in dollar terms and despite the collapse in the currency, you were, of course, better in equities even as a foreign investor than as a cash holder and bond holder. Cash holders, they lost 99% of their money because of this high uh, currency collapse. Of course, they made some money on interest, but it didn't com um, compensate for the collapse in the currency. The worst off were the bondholders. They got killed, wiped out. 
In high inflation times, the last thing you want to own are government bonds or corporate bonds. So basically, the equity holders did okay, but they didn't do, of course, as well as the local holders. In local currency, everything went up. The currency collapsed, and this, I think, could happen in the United States in the next 10 years or so. So if you print enough money in the United States, what can happen is the Dow Jones could go to 100,000 or to a million, and the dollar goes down by 99%. Now, I think we'll, what will continue to happen, and you know, you can have a period of three months where stocks outperform, say, precious metals. But I think the trend will be that precious metals will continue to outperform U.S. stocks uh, for the next few years. And that eventually, at the peak here of the stock market in year 2000, one Dow Jones bought 44 ounces of gold. Now it only buys 10 ounces of gold. I think eventually, uh, if you can buy one ounce of gold with one Dow Jones, you'll be lucky. But for the next three months, I think that maybe stocks here in especially Eastern Europe could outperform precious metals. Now, the last point I'd like to make in Asia, we had in March of this year 20 to 30 year lows. In Japan, we were at the same level than in 81. And in Hong Kong and in Taiwan, in uh, Korea, we were at the level that was the same as in 1987-88. And that was, in my opinion, a secular low. So I would consider also buying some equities in Asia because we've probably seen a long-term low. These are some investment themes. I mean, in emerging economies, I quite like insurance companies and banks because that is still an expanding market. Tourism and uh, equities in Asia, healthcare, local brands, commodities, of course and then short U.S. government bonds, long silver and gold. Corporate bonds, I had them as a long, but they've recovered like the stock markets, and so now they're less attractive. I'd just like to f finish my presentation that although I'm relatively positive that asset markets, including precious metals and commodities and equities, will continue to go up, I am extremely negative about the world for the simple reason that if you look at what the problems were that caused the crisis, excessive credit growth, and who caused the crisis? Mr. Tim Geithner, President of the Federal Reserve of New York, and Mr. Bernanke, Fed Chairman, and so forth, they're still all there. And they haven't applied any medicine to cure the patient. They just cure the, or treat the symptoms and give the drug addict more drugs so they can continue to work. It's like giving an alcoholic, when he's about to have a hangover, another shot of alcohol to make him move and avoid the hangover right away. But eventually the crisis that will come will be much more significant. And between now and then, it could be tomorrow, it could be five years, it could be ten years. But I would at least take some insurance for the ultimate crisis, and this is to own physical commodities. And of course, don't own them in the United States, because there they will be taken away from you. Whether you own them in a safe deposit box here, or in Switzerland, or under your bed, or dig them in your garden, that is up to you. But certainly I will not hold them in the United States. Thank you very much for your attention.